Welcome back to News Geelong. Well, it's fate time in and around many of our Geelong and district schools, and none bigger and better than the St Mary's Primary School Derby Day fate. In its 10th year, wet or dry, it always attracts a big crowd looking for bargains and good food. Even the state Liberal leader and his Geelong team thought so. And uh, it's the 10th annual fete. Uh, and it's, it's always been a great success. And uh, again, this year on a new site. Yes, we, uh, we started the fete in 2001 on the old St Mary's Primary School site. And uh, this year, with the completion of the school here and the parish centre, we've been able to move about 200, 200 metres down the road, right next to uh, the Basilica. It's a wonderful site. Um, it's a bigger site for the fete, so there's not perhaps the, uh, the crowding that there used to be, but uh, it's a, really a, a great site all round. And a great number of volunteers again helping out at the St Mary's Derby Day fete. Oh, absolutely fantastic. The number of people, I reckon if I added up everyone that's done something to this fete, it would be at least six or seven hundred people, at the very least. We believe it's a good event for Geelong. It, it binds our schools together. We've got the um, we've got the four parish schools of St Mary, St Margaret, St Roberts, and Christ the King, uh, all working together for this. But it also connects the parish, uh, very importantly, with the wider community in many and different ways. And uh, um, you know, it's not it's not good enough for the church to be just doing its own thing. We need to be doing the community thing, and we hope we can do that and give people a good time, rain notwithstanding. <laughs> Ed, welcome to Geelong. Uh, what brings you down here today? Well, obviously, the, the uh, fate here is a special, a special fate. Thousands of people normally uh, here uh, on uh, St Mary's fate day, Derby day. But the rain seems to have intervened a bit. We're a little, all a little bit damp, but uh, spirits are still very lively. And the team around Geelong uh, come, uh, coming up to the uh, elections in November, looking forward to it? Uh, we are. They're doing a great job. Alison Thompson here in Geelong and uh, Andrew Kados here and Kurt Ryder done a fantastic job, each and every one of them. They're young, they're energetic, they're involved, they're from the community, they're part of uh, Geelong, part of the Bellarine. That's how it should be. We're looking forward to it. Councillor Andrew Kados from the City of Greater Geelong and also the Liberal candidate for the uh, seat of South Bowen. A great day at the uh, Derby Day fight. Oh, it's a fantastic event uh, here at the Derby Day Fete, but un unfortunately the heavens have opened on us, so uh, a bit disappointing from the weather perspective, but look, people are still here in large numbers, which, which is fantastic. The, uh, the team at St Mary's always put on a wonderful day, and a little bit of rain's not going to stop people from coming out and having a good time, Graham. And of course, uh, being a, a former uh, Glastonbury Garden Centre uh, man, uh, you'd, you'd appreciate the rain. A little bit of water never harms the plants and just brings them on beautifully, Great. Plant stall over the back was doing a great trade. With Ted Bailey in Geelong on a wild and wet Saturday, News Geelong caught up with the state opposition leader about happenings in Victoria and Geelong with the approaching state elections on November 27. Victoria has so many opportunities that uh, we haven't really in the last 10 years taken advantage of and we're, we're just itching to... Uh, uh, let Victorians do what they do best, and that's get on with it. Well, in our great city of Geelong, we refer to Melbourne as the north, northern suburb of Geelong. And, of course, uh, after the recent... Oh, no, I thought you didn't refer to Melbourne at all. <laughs> we, we have to sometimes. But uh, the UCI Road World Cycling Championships, a great success for, was, for Geelong. It, it, it was a great day, and, and I thought it was, it was good for cycling, good for sport, uh, good for Geelong, obviously. Uh, you'd like to think you could do that uh, every year. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but uh, we're pretty keen to bring some other events here as well to make up for that. But I think it does prove that uh, you bring, uh, bring people together for an event like that. People will go out of their way. And yes, there were uh, a few hiccups and uh, things are a bit untidy for some people, but the, the, the net result was pretty good, I thought. Thank you for your time today and uh, enjoy the rain. Uh, indeed. And it's interesting to watch those water storages going soaring back up again. Unfortunately, we're going to have to pay for the measures the government put in place in the meantime. New Geelong, thanks to Mr Ted Barlew. Thank you. The Surf Coast Torquay Caravan Park continues to develop into another great tourist feature at the beginning of the Great Ocean Road, as Ian Nichols reports. Well, in real estate parlance, they talk about position, position, position. Well, take a look at this. This is the Sea View Cabins at the Torquay Caravan Park. They're brand new they're ultra modern and they have views to die for and they've been officially opened this week also along with that a huge power upgrade for this caravan park which has been here a long time in fact it's one of the most popular caravan parks in the state of victoria i'm sure we've told you many times before but today michael crutchfield 
The Labor member for this district has officially cut a ribbon, opening these brand new cabins. This is a wonderful project here at, at Torgo Caravan Park, $1.7 million of which the state's contributed 750 and we're standing on one of the uh, one of the abodes here looking out over the beach, over the ocean, over my shoulder, a fantastic spot. So it adds to a whole um, uh, range of accommodation here at Torquay Caravan Park, whether it's, whether it's tenting, whether it's caravanning or whether it's in these, in these particular cabins. And the upgrade has um, improved the electricity prior, the power supply and the water supply. Previously, uh, if you uh, had a flat screen TV and put a... Uh, a toast on, you trip the switch, so it's a magnificent upgrade to the southern section of the caravan park. Yes, the uh, Great Ocean Road Committee certainly congratulated today for their wonderful effort. And what about this view? How well named is this place, the Sea View Cabins? <laughs> well, I, I think you can see the view over my shoulder. Uh, I and it's no wonder it's booked out. I've booked out actually from today. I think they've got the people waiting till we leave. But it's booked out from today right through to, I think, almost Easter. So you couldn't get a better spot. You certainly, well, we'd argue here in Torquay, you wouldn't get a better spot along the coastline. Looking straight out over the surf beach, uh, you've got the shops and, and the, the, the immediate community behind us. It's a great spot for a hol holiday. We're particularly proud. Of We've had a very long gestation period preparing for this, uh, preparing a master plan. It's happened over several years, a lot of uh, consultation. Uh, but finally now, this year, after a lot of hard work, um, it's happened. And it's all state of the art. I mean, you think about caravan parks, it's not exactly rough, is it? <laughs> it's not rough, but what we provide here in this caravan park, it's a mixture. It's camping, it's caravans, and now some of these uh, cabins on the foreshore. It's a great initiative of a uh, Great Ocean Road committee to uh, make better use of this land and allow uh, more uh, members of uh, the community to come and stay here. Well, obviously, council would have supported this to the hilt with uh, so many good vibes coming from something like this. Yes, we certainly support this, and there's a lack of caravan parks in the region, and to allow uh, more permanent accommodation through the 12 months of the year is, uh, we think, is a lot better option than just having it uh, areas locked up just for the holiday season. At the brand new Sea View Cabins at Torquay Caravan Park, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Ian. The Revolution Exhibition at Torquay Surf Field showcases the surfers and stories from the colourful 1970 World Surfing Championships held at Bells Beach. You can explore spectacular images, vintage surfboards and rare film footage from 40 years ago and see the great exhibition of change on the sport and Bells Beach, as Ian Nichols reports. Well, today, News Geelong takes you to Torquay and a revolutionary exhibition here at Surf World. It deals with the 1970 World Surfing Championships, which were full of controversy and certainly the most interesting in recent times. And I'm talking with the curator of this exhibition, Craig Baird. News Geelong takes us into an amazing exhibition. It's called Revolution. It deals with the 1970 World Surfing Championships at Bells Beach and other places. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the man responsible, the curator, is Craig Baird. What a, what a, a lifetime of uh, work this must have been for you. Uh, look, at, uh, it's something that we spent about 18 months uh, developing and uh, quite a bit of work's gone into. And drawing all of the elements together is probably uh, the most important fact that some of these things have come from around the world. So uh, it's, uh, it's been a bit of an effort to pull all those things together and actually get them up on display. Well, you don't have to be a surfer to enjoy it. It really tells us that the world was changing around 1970 quite dramatically, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a lot, uh, a lot of social background and, and that's what we've tried to build into the uh, the exhibition that the, although the surfing contest happened and it was uh, pretty interesting, we haven't concentrated on the nuts and bolts of the surfing contest. We've looked at the characters that were involved, the fashions uh, and some of what was uh, the social background to uh, what was happening in 1970. People were investigating just exactly what surfing meant and there was some argument about whether surfing was sport or whether it was art. Well, that's true. and. Uh it attracted the attention of top world surfers, particularly from America, didn't it? Yeah, the 1970 world titles at Bells was really the first time that the world came to visit uh, Bells Beach. Previously there'd been uh, the Bells contest, uh, Victorian titles, uh, Australian titles, but this was the first time the world came to visit. And how long are we going to have this exhibition here at Torquay? The uh, Revolution exhibition runs here at Surf World until uh, Easter next year. 
Uh, it's the 50th anniversary of Bells, uh, the Bells competition next year, so we're running a major exhibition covering that. Uh, so Revolution will be here over that summer period and up to Easter next year. At the Revolution exhibition at Surf World Torquay, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Ian. News Geelong will continue with sport and weather after the break.